Welcome. This is coffee. Um, you probably expected beer. You probably also expected a vintage lens review. But sadly, you're not going to get either. And this actually is a video I didn't think I was going to make ever. I am now a father to a beautiful, beautiful baby daughter. Her name is Aria. And I am now a Fujifilm shooter. Let me explain. I did tease about uh, making this video and uh, I want to end all that with a bit of a closure for everyone interested. So uh, well this is certainly not by any stretch of the imagination of camera review. It's much more of a I wouldn't necessarily call it a rant video, but yeah, call it a vlog. Because I'm going to talk about a lot of things that have led me to the decision of getting a Fujifilm camera and switching from Sony to Fuji, because indeed I am ditching my full frame Sony mirrorless and vintage lenses, tools I've used for the past, what now, six, seven, eight years or so. Not necessarily the same Sony mirrorless, but I've been with Sony since 2000, either 16 or 18, I can't remember. And uh, uh, vintage lenses as well. So I'm ditching Sony and fully embracing Fuji and the crop sensor and their native X-mount XF lenses for now. This also means quite a bit of a change as far as my YouTube channel is concerned. And uh, just as I uh, previously mentioned, I will not be doing any vintage lens reviews. I will talk about why in this video, together with why I'm ditching Sony for Fuji. And um, more generally so about my new approach to photography and a slightly new direction I'm trying to go in. Uh, this is entirely unscripted as practically all my videos are, so you will kindly excuse me if it's a bit all over the place. I will talk about things as I remember them uh, and as they become uh, or rather the ideas become clearer in my head, but I do, I do, I do know what I want to say because it's something I've pondered for great, great time. So uh, for a great time, for a long time is what I meant. Now, um, let me start with why Fuji and how come Fuji and why ditch mirrorless Sony full frame for a mirrorless crop sensor camera? Part of that is due to gas. Some part of me has always enjoyed getting new gear, buying new toys because let's face it, men are just bigger boys and these are just more serious and frankly quite tremendously more expensive toys, however, still toys. Uh, and that part of me always enjoyed getting new stuff. 
I've been with Sony for quite a bit of time and I have gotten so accustomed to the system. I've gotten to know it so well, it practically had no secrets to me. I, I could work that camera with my eyes closed. I, I seldom, if ever, needed to go into the menus. Actually, the only time I ever got into the menus one was when I needed to format the camera or possibly every once in a blue moon to change the frame rate for video or change a creative style when shooting JPEGs for YouTube thumb thumbnails. But that is to say I knew everything I needed to know for my workflow as far as Sony is concerned. So it has begun becoming a bit stale and at one point I've started looking into other brands. I flirted a lot, like a lot, with the idea of um, getting into Olympus, their OMD lineup, lineup. I really, really love the aspect, the form factor, the weather ceiling, a lot of things about the EM5. Not so much their EM1s, although they're the professional line. I really, really wanted the EM5s. Later on, I really, really wanted the EM10 Mark IV. I almost pulled the trigger on that one, almost got it. Like this spring, I almost, almost purchased it. But uh, thanks to Paul yet again, hi Paul, uh, I was able to test the EM5 Mark II and uh, my suspicion was correct. Their sensors, well, technically very good for what I need are too small and their size is not a measure of their quality per se because the way I shoot, I don't really need perfect, crisp, pristine pictures. I don't mind some noise in my images. Actually, I add noise into my images practically every time I post-process them. So that dreaded quote, low uh, performance at high ISO was nothing that uh, really worried me. What did worry me and ended up being a deal breaker was there I mean you can beat physics and I find images coming out of their uh, sensors to look really really flat now I know you can put a f 1.2 lens on that and it will start to look a lot more natural more 3d more have a bit more of depth but uh, with their middle of the line, more budget lenses, where I usually do my shopping, middle of the line, budget, high, mid range, uh, th the images coming out of the M5 have a very, very flat look. They're, they, they look like they're made with a really, really good phone. Like they, they look like images out of an S27 Plus Max Pro Ultra. So that's not something I enjoy. Then I gave up the idea of getting a new camera and thought, ah, oh, eh, it's just gas. I'll just stick with what I know, stick with what I have. I, I had, I still do, but I shot the A7R2, which is a beast of a camera. On paper, it's fantastic. It's certainly much more than I need. Really, really great. So uh, I had begun rationalizing my decision to stick with my tools. Couple that with the fact that I don't necessarily have spare money lying around, so I can't justify, I can't easily justify purchases on a whim. So, um, I thought and I thought and I thought and sending you back to the video where I said I struggle with creativity. Uh, in that video I wondered if maybe a new camera or an entire new system would maybe spark a new 
a new joy, a new vision. But uh, eventually, I, I kind of came to the conclusion that it wouldn't. And I just needed to snap out of it and wade through the difficult stuff and actually just soldier through and wait it out in the end. Uh, so this is how I basically decided to stick with my Sony and vintage lenses and give up on acquiring new gear. But still something ate away at that little monkey brain of mine that wants new gear and Although I had made that rational decision, although I had reached that apparently argumented and logical conclusion, there was still a part of me that wanted to try new gear. There was still a part of me that felt like I was somehow being held back by the stuff I used, although I, I didn't necessarily at that time yet know what it was still more time passed still more time spent thinking about it when i eventually realized something about my photos there was a time actually there were a couple of times when i was processing my photo Hold that thought because I also want to talk about processing photos. There was a couple of there were a couple of times when processing my photos that I kind of liked the color versions more. But deep down inside, I always thought about myself as a black and white photographer. This has gotten to be so much a part of my identity that I almost didn't let myself make color photos. I kept switching in my editing software between the color version and the black and white version. And well, at times I enjoyed the color version more. I eventually ended up with the black and white version because I usually got to, to the conclusion that colors are not that nice. I even at times thought color was vulgar and just added noise and uh, distraction to unnecessary elements of confusion to an image so I ended up sticking to black and white. Coming back to processing photos I shot a wedding in April I shot 2,500 images and uh, boy oh boy was it a chore to go through all of them several times because you do need to and process them uh, process them all and then go through them again and check your edits. It, it was not something I enjoyed doing. I enjoyed the shooting part. I enjoyed it a lot. I didn't enjoy the editing. And I started thinking, what if, what if I had a camera that was so nice, that shot so, so well, that I didn't need to edit my photos. And uh, immediately I began considering Fuji and their famous recipes, their film simulations. So that little seed of an, of an idea was planted in my head. What if I could just shoot and deliver, shoot and post? Still, I was stuck. Well, not stuck. Still, I decided to stick with my Sony and uh, vintage lenses. I also had a bit of a worry about uh, downgrading from full frame to crop sensor. You know, depth of field, lower, high ISO performance, yada yada yada. The tipping point was when I realized two things about vintage lenses about shooting manual lenses for street photography and about doing vintage lens reviews or rather perhaps 
lens reviews in general, but uh, that's a bit of a caveat and we'll get there. Firstly, I had a good look at my Instagram profile and uh, my portrait mode portfolio and I kind of realized practically all my photos are images of people sitting or standing still. You know, while throughout all these years I have begun, I have become pretty, pretty good at manual focus. And I'm not saying that to brag about it, it's just a matter of fact. With practice, with practice comes, comes uh, I wouldn't say perfection, but you get good at stuff, you practice a lot. And I have gotten pretty good at manual focusing. Some people, and yet again, not to brag, just stating this as a matter of fact, a lot of people have spoken to me with admiration about being able to shoot street photography with manual lenses and shoot weddings with manual lenses exclusively and deliver actually decent work to clients. And it's not necessarily merit of mine. I'm not better than you or anyone else. I just perhaps practiced more, so I have become quite quite confident with manual focus lenses. However, there were times and difficult situations when achieving decent enough focus, and I'm not saying razor sharp pinpoint focus on the eyes, decent focus. There were situations when achieving a decent focus was tough or rather impossible. And uh, with uh, time, I had begun to recognize the situations in which uh, odds were I wouldn't be able to get focus. People walking towards me, it's pretty difficult to estimate distances. Couple that with the fact that I stubbornly, stubbornly shoot my lens is wide open because of course I do. Perhaps a subject for another video. These things combined, combined uh, made for situations where I didn't even try to take a picture because, you know, I, I, I was able to judge the scene in front of me and quickly, quickly know if I'm able to get the shot or not and I had begun only taking the shots I knew I could take. So I realized there was a lot of stuff I was missing out on. Dynamic shots, movement, stuff that goes on quickly. Like you notice something that, you know, happens quickly. I didn't even raise the camera to my eye because I knew I had to raise the camera to my eye focus the lens, watch out for the peaking. If I wanted crisper focus, punch in to zoom to magnify, get better focus, and that takes precious, precious seconds. So there were, there were occasions when I didn't even, even, I didn't even try to take the picture. Not once, not twice, but several, several times. On that note, Sometimes when, uh, I mean, I'm not making any secret out of the fact that I'm shooting street photography. I don't shoot from the hip in as such as uh, hiding. I shoot from the hip when the framing is better when shot from the hip. But I do post myself in front of my subject, frame, focus, and shoot the picture. With manual lenses, you need a few more seconds to get a perfect or rather decent focus. And by the time you do, you are noticed. The subject of your photo enters in that uh, posing mode. If he's not or she's not confrontational or protest, they start to smile. They make these signs. I hate these signs or this sign. Uh, the magic is gone. The candid nature of the image is gone because I was there for too long. So I thought, what if, 
what if I had an autofocus lens? Would I not perhaps be able to just zoom in through the street and raise the camera to my chuk chuk, take a photo, let the autofocus do the focusing work, and by the time the person realizes I've shot their photo, I'm out of there. And again, that's not to hide the fact that I'm doing street photography, but rather not to spoil the magic of the moment. This is a facet of my considering switching from manual lenses to autofocus lenses. Why now give up on making vintage lens reviews? Firstly, because uh, I, while I, going back to the beginning of this video, while I do enjoy getting new stuff and trying out new stuff, my channel has become much more of a gear review channel than I ever wanted. So um, that coupled with the fact that trying all these vintage lens reviews, which are indeed quite accessible as far as price and availability goes, allowing me to get many and often, that meant that I never really got to really know my tools. I did get to know the camera, but not the lenses. And if you get to know the lens, which is a big factor of the tools you use, you're better at photography. With trying a lot of lenses, all different, all different focus throws, all different aperture rings, all different weights and sizes, I felt like I, I never mastered any of them. It also felt a lot like a distraction because instead of uh, taking pictures of the street, I uh, always had a checklist in my mind. I needed pictures that shows the bokeh the lens is able to do. I needed pictures that show the sharpness and detail and ability to reproduce resolution. I needed pictures that show flares. I needed pictures that show geometric distortions and chromatic aberrations. And f there was so much I needed to do in order to deliver a decent enough review that at times it kept me from doing my actual street photography. And th th that distracted me from street photography. I, I felt all over the place. I felt like a jack of all trades and a master of none. I was decently good with all of them, but never really mastering any of them. So that is a big part of why I gave up doing vintage lens reviews. Because firstly, I want to shoot autofocus. And secondly, I want to focus more on street photography and less on gear reviews. I want to stick with my tools and use them for longer and get to know them and really, really, really master them. Now, why not keep my Sony full frame and get Sony lenses? Well, there was also another important factor. I wanted something that's really, really much smaller of a package, much more of an everyday carry, something I can just sling across my shoulder or chest or whatever and have my camera with me all the time. And uh, full frame lenses are big, certainly bigger than crop, crop sensor lenses. So um, I knew I had to, to give that up. Also the Sony, well, very small, as far as uh, full frame cameras go, it, it's still a bit bigger, certainly with a lens, it's bigger than this. 
Now, body alone compared, they're not that dissimilar. You can probably hear my baby girl crying in the background. She's being changed. She just hates those diaper changes, man. But uh, it is what it is. Uh, just, just <laughs> hang in there, little girl. So coming back to the decision to switch from Sony. Another part of it was that I, well, I never really agreed with all those people saying Sony cameras are hideous and really poor ergonomically. Quite the contrary, I thought the camera looked pretty great with a vintage lens on it and had really great ergonomics. It is true that once you put a native lens on it, the grip or rather the distance between the grip and the lens becomes really, really small and it often hurt my knuckles. Now I didn't hurt them like they were bleeding, but it, it, it was uncomfortable. The camera was quite heavier, bigger, with bigger lenses, more expensive lenses. And uh, when I did try, because I did try the Sigma 45 millimeter f 2.8, uh, I, I found it just barely decent. I mean, great image quality, but not as fast as far as autofocus goes as I'd have liked. So uh, that on one side, and the fact that the camera itself had become feeling stale and uninspiring and much more of a computer that takes photos than an actual camera. And I had become very enamored with the idea of getting a Fuji camera, especially seeing how I really, really do love this aesthetic. It's really, really great. This is fantastic. So yeah, I got this, the Fujifilm X-T2 with the XF 23mm f2, a 35mm equivalent. It's basically a better, cheaper, weather sealed X100. More robust and very, very capable. And you can change lenses. It's really, I did consider getting an X100. F or T, never the V because, hey, I'm not made of money. But uh, in the end, I, I decided on this. It's fantastic. I will make another video once I've gotten much more used to it than I have by now, where I talk about what I like about it, what I don't, how it feels. But uh, just, just as a... A few pointers. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's so much better than I expected. So much nicer. It, it, it's all the things I liked in the Sony and a lot of things I never even thought I needed. It's given me in spades. It, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Really fantastic. And the crop sensor, the bay, the, sorry, the extra sensor, man, oh man, I think is just pure sorcery. The way it renders colors. And this is perhaps why I never, never really was able to shoot colors with Sony. Because the people that say Sony colors are weird and yucky, I always thought they were haters. I always thought that was myths and urban legends, but they were right and I was wrong. The Sony colors have a bit of a weirdness to them. They need a lot more massaging. They need a lot more processing in order to, 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 to reach a state where they're pretty and nice. And this, they're just 
nice straight out of camera. Shoot a JPEG, put a film simulation into the camera and just be done with it. I do shoot RAWs and JPEGs and uh, that's just for comfort, peace of mind. I do end up uh, using JPEGs more and more often and uh, I do want to keep the RAWs for archiving for my um, for future sake and for that situations where uh, I really need to get more of an more out of an image like dynamic range or pull the shadows out of darkness and uh, it's good to know that I have the raws for that but for everyday stuff I just use the JPEGs and they're brilliant they're brilliant the camera handles lovely I I worried about this grip being too too narrow but man oh man is it comfortable i worried about my pinky not having a way uh, not having where to go but it just tucks in here really really splendid and this the lens has everything i liked in a vintage lens and more i do like a dedicated aperturing i do like metal lenses the camera and the lens are weather sealed. You know about the knobs. The feel in hand is great. It's light, it's sturdy. It looks like it can take a beating. I'm really in love with this camera and I am selling my a7R2. I'm switching away from full frame Sony mirrorless completely over to the Fuji side. Because just as I started wondering i am an, i am able to get more and better shots more dynamic more active shots i do have more keepers i do dare shoot scenes and stuff i didn't even try to with uh, manual focus uh, it, it, it's just better all around. For what I shoot, it's fantastic. And now seeing how I have a 10 day old baby daughter, you can imagine the amount of pictures I make. And it, it, it just, it's really, I never really understood how much of a help autofocus is. Because I'm able to do one stuff with, to, to do stuff with one hand and shoot pictures with the other take pictures of my daughter or stuff that I'm doing so it, it's really it has helped me and allowed me to get more and better photos that pretty much wraps it up um, no it doesn't there's one more thing I want to add and uh, I will end with that. It's also true that getting a new camera inspires you. Now I'm not saying this is true for everybody all the time, no matter what, but it was certainly true to me. After I got this camera, I really felt a very big urge to go out shooting and uh, if uh, in the past I could go weeks without going out to shoot after getting this I would go out daily like every single day one after the other and I would end up loving shooting it and come back home with good images it, it, it just sparked a new way of seeing life. It also made me appreciate colors. I just love the Astia. Uh, people tend to use it for portraits, which is great for, but I love Astia for pretty much a, a lot more, pretty much everything when I'm shooting color. I just love the soft, slightly unsaturated look. I really love it. It's just, it's like I'm, photography is fun again. It's like I'm starting with it all over again. It's really, really a great experience. 
I love this so much. I, uh, I'm happy I did it. Uh, really, I can't, I can't find more words to praise this, this awesome little camera. Some uh, housekeeping before wrapping this all up. I want to remind you of my giveaway, which I started in the previous video. There's still a couple weeks-ish left until I, I uh, elect a winner. And I do want to remind you that you, uh, there's three things you need to do. You need to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You need to follow my Instagram links in the description and you need to post a comment below the video with your own Instagram handle and so far out of 10 12 15 comments I've gotten there was a single one that did this what am I to understand that nobody wants the camera that's fine by me but uh, I do want to make sure that you understood what you need to do because if things remain the same, I will just give the camera and it's a pretty good one. It's a 1966, I think, Minolta Hymatic 7S, a film rangefinder camera. And I will give it to the single person that did follow the requirements. I also want to remind you of my recently published photography book, 100 pages of uh, black and white photography printed on 150 gram paper there are still very very few copies left so if you want to get one get in touch with me i am shipping internationally provided you pay for the shipping costs i want to take this channel into a direction where i focus more on photography and less so on gear although i will be sharing my opinions on this camera and the lenses i'm using in a gear review kind of way but generally speaking i want to focus more on photos photography uh, opinion pieces and uh, less so on reviewing gear I'm sorry to disappoint those of you that are here for vintage lenses. I do hope you stick around. But if you don't, no hard feelings. Uh, I know that uh, there's just so much time in the day. So uh, time is precious. Your attention is precious. So if you don't find anything interesting here anymore, I'm perfectly fine with... Uh, you deciding not to follow me anymore. That said, this has been a thousand words. This has been Radu, now a Fujifilm X photographer. Also now a very, very happy, yet sometimes tired, father of a beautiful little girl. Until next time, I bid you farewell. <laughs>